Tuesday night, we are going to continue with our NVBB. I can't say it. Yeah. Yeah. Volleyball. We're going to be doing volleyball. So I heard it wasn't good. I wasn't there last week, but I heard it was a good turnout. So Tuesdays, 5.30 to 7.30, whether you uh, are good at volleyball or not, or just want to watch, come on out and encourage the guys and girls to play. We just want to open up the property. We have been blessed with 11 acres here in Fairview and a beautiful piece of property. So we've got volleyball and other playground, a trail through the woods, all the things out. You are welcome to come use it. Man, whether you're a long time member or just a visitor, we've got people from the community that walk our trail, play on the playground, and it's great to be a blessing. Okay, so we're just thankful for that. Uh, Wednesday night, we're going to be continuing our series by John Rivera Breaking Intimidation online, uh, starting at 7, but then you can access it anytime after that. Amen. That's a brand new series, Pastors, our Bounty Pastors, Pastor Paul and Sister Ann, they uh, started this this past Wednesday. And uh, we're just excited to do what we did years ago. It's a great series by John Beer, so tune in for that anytime you want. We can't make it live on Wednesdays. Um, we are going to be having our rubbish sale um, July 10th and 11th. Uh, it benefits our community day. That will probably look a little bit different this year. Um, we're not really sure, but we still want to do something. In the past, we've had blow ups and free backpacks and clothes and games and not sure that we're going to be able to do all of that, but we still want to bless the community. So we're working on the details. But that right. is going to be benefiting that, and you can drop your stuff off starting next Sunday. After the church. After, After church. church. Next Sunday, you can start dropping stuff off. And we don't want your garbage. We want good stuff that's going to make us money for the king. I mean, good stuff. So you can surprise the people by it. So what we do, like, mostly we have a price area, we have a donation area, and God bless us. So we're just thrilled to do that. What else we got? Oh, next Sunday. Next Sunday, in honor of Fourth of July weekend, we are asking if you want to wear red, white, and blue, or some type of Americana. Um, some people are early. You guys did good. That's great. You jumped the gun a little bit. That's awesome. You guys started. So next Sunday, red, white, and blue, you don't have to wear all three. You can if you want. So... Just something American like that to support what's going on in our nation. We are thankful for America. Amen. We still say God bless America. Yeah. It is the greatest nation on this earth. Amen. Pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. We're glad to be here. Uh, and then giving. You can do it online. Uh, we don't have our normal giving. We're passing the bucket. We've got our church here. we got a walk off right now. The buckets are in the back. You can give online anytime or in service in the back, or you can even send your giving by mail. That still works, too. So, with that said, if you would, oh, we got a couple other announcements. Go, one more. We just want to give a shout-out to uh, Tim and Holly on their first anniversary. Yes, so, one year anniversary. Yes. One year anniversary. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. And we had another anniversary that happened a little bit over the season. We had Brian and Sherry at their 25th, is that right? 25th anniversary. We should congratulate them. Lisa and, uh, oh, they had their first two. Yeah, Yeah, Lisa and Zach, too, celebrated during this crazy season. So congratulations on your anniversary. Go didn't stop you guys from celebrating, did it? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Kiss to the best. <laughs> Amen. And just so everybody knows, too, with everything going on, we have some formats. We put it online. Uh, we are sanitizing between every service. Just last night we were here watching all the light switches, handles, doorknobs, everything like that. It's time to sanitize as much as we can. We don't have a kids' church or nursery. We're not doing the family room after as far as coffee and snacks. So church is a little different, a little abbreviated. The kids are in the room there in uh, the sermon, so here's some shout outs and screams. Uh, one of the famous ones I remember in church down in Blair, Blair Bible School, kid yelled out right in the middle of like a really quiet time. And he was acting up. The, the mother scooped him up and was carrying him out the back. And the boy screamed as loud as he could, Mama, don't whoop me! <laughs> he, was, he was calling for prayer. Church prayer. Don't whoop me. Scream it all the way out yeah, of the house. So. Yeah, everybody was sickers under the ground. It's so fun. But so we are not bothered by that. We are a family church. 
we, uh, my wife and I, believe it or not, we have eight children of our own. They're not really children anymore. I was holding our little grandbaby there during the uh, during the service, and uh, my parents had six boys and 75 foster children, and we love family. Uh, our first, or really our second building that we had uh, over in the uh, the other room here, we'll talk about a little bit, was where we had our whole church for a long time. We just had a little partition between the nursery and the sanctuary. And kids would be screaming on the other side. My dad's trying to preach, and I was trying to play the piano sometimes through that. And, uh, we don't mind it one bit. Don't get nervous. But if you need to, you can take your child out into the hallway, into one of the rooms if you need to, and even into the outside if it gets that bad. But uh, we're just thankful. We're just glad to be in the house. Amen. Amen. With all the rules going on, the regulations, and we're just glad to be together. We knew when we were doing some of the recording for the church, we would record sometimes the worship on Tuesday and the sermon on Friday and then air all on Sunday. Didn't know we weren't live. Sometimes we snuck one in on you. It was just so much better because we had so many problems with the internet going live. And nothing like trying to lead worship and then Jordan stand behind or Joel stand behind saying, guys, it's not even going. No one's watching. It's, it's gross. You know? And then come to find out they could still see, just couldn't hear. <laughs> so we're just like, just stop. Let's just record. This is crazy. So we recorded and he was able to edit it, put it all together so I'm great with it. Um, but we just knew we had to get you in the room, in the house, and experience worship together. There's nothing like it. Corporate worship, worshiping our God, lifting our hands, hearing each other, encouraging one another. Whether you're touching, hugging, high-fiving from a distance or air hugs, it's just good to be together. Amen? Amen. So we're glad you're with us this morning. If you want to stand your feet as we do at this church, our church declaration. And again, we've got some members of our family from other churches, other uh, gatherings join with us until their house opens up. But we're just glad you're here, man. Amen. We serve the same Father. You're our brother and sister. We love you. We're so glad you're with us. Let's go ahead and read that together. We will be the church where people encounter the love of God, where they learn to live out God's purpose and plan for their life so they can lead others to Him. Love, live, lead. We will love like no other, live with intention, and lead by example. Why? Come on, because we believe he makes all things new. Amen. Give the Lord a shout. Amen. I'm so thankful for my beautiful wife. Most beautiful grandma around. Come on. She's definitely married up. Amen. We're opening our opening text this morning, the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. That kind of talk we can say in Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. We're going to say in this verse, stay safe this morning. Let him lead me to the banquet hall, and let his banner over me be love. Hallelujah. Read that one more time. Let him lead me to the banquet hall, and let his banner over me be love. I want to share with you this morning just a few minutes on a thought. What's your banner say? What's your banner say? God, your heads and and pray. Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word, God. I thank you for all those that came and gathered here in this room and, and for all those that are joining us online right now. Lord, I pray you go into their homes, encourage them, strengthen them, bless them, fire them up, God, stir them up. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in the church. Worldwide in 2020. Uh, we're not scared, God. Lord, we stand on your promises, your protection. Lord, your plan that you have an answer in 2020. You are the way, the truth, and the life, God. I thank you for all you're doing. Open your word to us today, God. Let us hear your voice, see your face, feel your embrace, God. Lord, I see a crowd of people, God, but you see every heart individually, Lord. And I pray you speak in a voice that everyone knows is you. Do your work like only you can do in Jesus' mighty name. Call the church said. Amen. Amen. Well, I am so excited to share this message and this work with you this morning. Seth's on camera, so he's going to try to stay with me. Last week, Lisa was out of the place and commented online, like, it would be nice if the camera moves because I can't see Matt at all because he walks all over the place. And Seth's doing a good job tracking me. Good job. Um, and then we showed a video for five minutes and couldn't see any of it. Sorry about that. But uh, we are learning through this whole thing. Um, what's your banner say? I mentioned last week that we had a big surprise 
if you're new to the church, you don't know this, but we did a lot of remodeling. We took advantage of the time we had during the COVID season. I just, we hit it. We got the, the family room totally done, added a bunch of things there, started cutting the foyer, and uh, we're just, we've got a couple projects we're still going to do in the foyer, and one of them is going to be revealed today. I was going to mount it on the wall in there and just everybody see it individually as you come in, but we're family, and my family, we like to do things together. We still believe in family dinners at our house. It doesn't happen every day, but we like to do it a lot as often as we can. And whenever we got news, family meeting, or whenever somebody gets something new, we introduce it to the family, or a new family member, or a family uh, pet, or a car, or all that stuff. We're, we're, we're big on doing things together. So this is just an extension of our family. So we want you to see it at the same exact time. And pastor, our founding pastors, my parents haven't even seen it yet. We didn't even show them. But, uh, so you're going to get to see it at the same time as them. So it's, it's that banner right over there kind of goes with our, our sermon theme today. What's your banner say? Um, before we get into that, why don't you turn to Joshua chapter 4. It's going to take a few minutes to, to go through everything on the banner. But Joshua chapter 4, if you've got your Bible, your paper Bible with you in front of you, say amen. 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 All right, we've got a few folks with paper Bible. Amen. Turn to Joshua chapter 4. But don't let it just sit and warm your lap. Open that thing up. Come on, blow a little dust off it. Open that thing up so you can still find Joshua chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 4. We're going to read to verse 7. Then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had appointed from the children of Israel. Now this is just to give you a little text around where we're at here. This is Israel. been in the wilderness for 40 years. Got brought them through the Red Sea. All that stuff. Now they're beginning to enter into the promised land. They're going to cross this river called Jordan. Verse 5, and Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. Each one of you take up a, a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 6, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Verse 7, that you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When he crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Let's skip down a few verses in Joshua chapter 4, verse 20 through 24, we're going to read. It says, In those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Verse 21, Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over. Verse 24, that all the people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Amen. Amen. I love this passage of Scripture. There's so much in it, but I just want to bring out a few things. In uh, First Joshua tells the 12 in verses 4 and 5. We kind of flip back and through if you want while I'm, while I'm talking about this. In verses 4 and 5, Joshua tells the 12. And then later on in the verses to come, like then we drop down to verse 21, he tells everybody. First he told the 12, and then he tells everybody. Maybe you think of Jesus. First he told the 12, and then he told everybody else. Amen. It's funny how those things just kind of pop up in the Old Testament and the New Testament. But when Joshua tells everyone, he adds to how you should answer. See, in the first passage we read, he tells the 12 that you're going to go and you're going to grab stones. Each one of you, there's 12 tribes of Israel, like 12 different sections divided up of the, of the nation of Israel. He grabbed one man. I don't know if it was a champion warrior. I don't know if it was, what, what it was, who he picked doesn't say, but he picked one man out of each tribe and gathered them together. He said, you 12, I want each of you to go into this river that we're about to cross and pick a stone. We're going to pile up these stones. And when your children see them and ask, what do these things mean? Mom, Dad, Grandpa, what do these mean? You're going to tell them, God brought us over the Jordan, through the Jordan on dry land. It's going to be a memorial to them, always. That's what he told the 12. But when he told Everyone else, he added to it. I think it's funny. We need to pay attention to these kind of things. In uh, 
Let's read verse 22. What he says in verse 22. It says, Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over the Jordan on dry land. And in verse 23, it says, For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until he had, we had crossed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up until we had crossed over. I love it. See, the one verse just says, this is what God did. But then it goes on and says, this is what God did for the generation before me. This is what God did in my life. But son, daughter, I want you to know what God did in your grandparents' life. And I love how it adds your God. It could have just said, well, this is what the Lord God did. And it would have made sense. But one little word changes so much. It says, instruct them that the Lord, your God, did this for me in my life. That the Lord, your God, did this for grandma and grandpa in their life. And that Lord, he's your God today. And he wants to do the same. He can move the same as he did in my generation and in the generation before me. And he can do the same and greater in your generation. From generation to generation. I love us just one word. Changes everything. The Lord, your God. Be careful to instruct. And this wasn't just for those guys that were around back then. This is for us today. Yes, us today. Yeah. We need to pass it on. Somebody say, pass it on. Pass it on. Amen. 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 He doesn't want to just be the Lord God. He wants to be the Lord your God. See, God sowed a son so he could reap a family. If you take notes, that's a good one right now. John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God planted a son in the earth so he could reap a family. It wasn't just about one dying and raising from the dead, but we, he was the firstborn of many sons and daughters. We are joint heirs. I love that. God sowed a son so he could reap a family. And we are in that family today. Still yeah, growing, amen. still going on. Amen. Yeah. The family name carries on. It's not enough to know about him. You have to know him and have him know you. To hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. God doesn't want to be studied. He wants to be known. I love that line. God doesn't want to be studied. It's good to study the Bible. But there's secular people all over, professors that have studied history and used the Bible as reference points. They study the Bible, even the God of the Bible, but don't know him. We need to do more than study him. We need to know him yeah. and be known by him. Then Joshua goes on and tells him to continue the response to the children and tell them in verse 23, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea. Amen. Generation to generation. Don't ever limit God. Don't ever limit God. When it looks like there's no way, God can make a way. Israel found that out back up to the Red Sea. Did you bring us out here just to die? There's no way out. Boom, God shows up. There's a way. But well, it seems to be no way. They're in the wilderness for 40 years. There's not, no provision at all. There's nothing to eat or drink. God provides manna from heaven, water from a rock that feeds thousands and their cattle. God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Son, daughter, do not limit what God can and will do in your life. Yeah. What do these stones mean? What's your banner say? This banner that we're about to introduce will be like our stones. New beginning search. What does these things mean? And I'm going to need a little help. When you say that, I want you to do it. Levi, come here. Israel had 
12 stones, but we got 21 squares up there. 21 different shapes. We're just switching numbers around a little bit. And there were some honorable mentions that didn't make it on the banner. We'll talk about it in another service. But I just want to go over with you some of these stones to mean. This is who we are. This is where we've been. This is what God's done for 35 years. If you're new to the church, just didn't start. Our 35th anniversary of the church happened in April. And we're going to be holding, uh, we're getting the dates locked in, but it looks like in September, we're going to be holding our 35 and a half year anniversary conference. There we go, 35 and a half. Everybody has a 35th. We got a special on 35 and a half. And we do the official laying on hands ceremony, passing the torch, um, pastor change. We officially kind of just did it behind the scenes, but we wanted to wait and share that, that moment with everyone all together so you guys could be here. But some of these things, if you're not familiar with the church, you're going to be here a while. Some of them might be a little strange, you might not have heard of them before. We're going to go through them one by one just take a few minutes this morning. First, we're going to stop in the top left-hand corner. Begin a new Christian academy. Begin a new Christian academy. How long did we have? Seven years. Seven years. Seven years we had a K through 12 Christian school, teachers in this place. Every nook and cranny in this building uh, had kids, had books, had computers, even back in the day. And big ones, yeah, all around on a cart. And those rooms were classrooms. My office back here was a classroom. The storage room was a classroom. We still continually call this room right here the library, even though it's just got nothing but like hardware and storage in it right now. Because for seven years, it was lined with shelves and books, and it was the library. So if you hear me say, put something in the library, that's what we mean. It's just the hallway, so the sound is fun. Which hallway? So the kindergarten through 12th grade school, we get a new Christian academy. A place of education, a place of discipline, discipleship, learning, evangelism. We get a new, can't even look at my parents. They're about crying over here, breaking me up. Awesome. We get a new Christian academy. The ultimate trip. We cannot get away from this thing. It gets brought up. How many years did we do the ultimate trip? No, like God, like thirteen. I think it's something like that. Thirteen, somewhere around. Between seven and thirteen years, um, we did uh, the ultimate trip. I tried to show it. We actually had VHS tapes out this morning of the meeting booth, and we were trying to get a little glimpse of one to share with you. But it was an outreach we did around the Halloween time, an outdoor. Um, play that took over a hundred actors, people from all different churches in our area got together and we put on this, some people called it a Christian haunted house, but it was really just a reality trip. Started out front of the yard, went all the way through the woods, behind the doctor's office in the wood, came out back out front, and it was an amazing thing. It took four months to build, even longer to tear down, <laughs> and every year we put this thing on and it was just an amazing outreach we did. And people still call or come across. You the church that did that thing in the woods? Or I came, but lives were changed. And it's part of who we are. It's part of what we've done. Amen. All kinds of things. Families brought together. Abusive relations stopped. Abortions stopped. People didn't go through with things because of this outreach. It's an awesome. It's a part of us. We'll never be able to get away from it. So we can go all fame. All the church. Next, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. That's one of our core verses. It says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The food bank. We've been led by a few different people for a long time in the Carter family. Lisa's grandmother really started it. And then her, her mom carried it on. And, uh, and my mom's running it right now. It's just been a, a, a blessing to so many. You've been blessed by the food bank. Amen. Lift up your hand. It's just been a blessing so long. And now, through this whole COVID season, not just us are blessed by it, or just a few people here and there in the community, but this community and surrounding community every week was blessed by that ministry of the food bank. So we're so thankful for it and all you doing through that. Next, we got back over here on the left, Fairview, Pennsylvania. Come on, this is our town. This is our city. You know, some go to different schools, work in different school districts. Fairview is where God planted us. 
Fairview is where he got he planted this work. New beginning church here in Fairview, Pennsylvania. This is our city. Reminded of the verse the Bible says to go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We will go everywhere else. But first, we're going to take care of right here. God has called us to make a difference in Fairview, Pennsylvania. If we're not making a difference, we ain't doing his work. We're just some club. We're just some members only club that sits so far off of 20. Nobody even knew we were there. But we are making a difference. Impacting. Being an influencer is the new word people want to say. Fairview, Pennsylvania. Next, we got Love, Live, Lead. Come on, that's our mission. It's written on the wall. And we want to do more than just have it written on the wall. We want to live this thing out. We want to walk it out. But the first thing people encounter when they walk in the doors of this building or in the doors of your home or in your work area or in your by your locker at school or in your life, the first thing they encounter is the love of God. Before they meet the laws of God or the rules or regulations or this thing or that thing, they meet and encounter the love of God. First thing we want to do love. Love like no other. Live is what we want to do. Live with intention. Come on, on purpose, not by accident. Live with intention. We need by example. It's our mission. And the next one, Mighty Fine Donuts. Do you hear for Mighty Fine Donuts? The best donut that hands down in all the world. I don't know about this chain donut stuff. Are you going to mention your name? Crusty something. It ain't nothing compared to Mighty Fine Donuts. This sermon is sponsored by. Uh, we didn't get nothing for it. That's all right. We will gladly lift their name. I do find out it's uh, the best son. So, I mean, I don't know about you, but chocolate covered cream filled. I'm with my dad. He raised me right. That's the way to go. My wife, she's on the other side with the uh, the custard. With the, uh, I don't even, it's the other stuff. <laughs> but Glade Swiss, I've been there many times. And I said, What's the difference between the glazed Swiss and the glazed the round glaze? I'm getting so off. I know it's going to be a few minutes. It's, just, it's the same thing. They just twist it, but something magical happens. <laughs> so, I'm glad you're getting spiritual. Community day, moving on. But my dad has used Mighty Fine Donuts as a temptation. Uh, people have said he's, he talks about it when he's fasting. It's that day that somebody shows up with a box of Mighty Fine Donuts. And he uses it as an example of temptation in your life. When, when you're going down Parade Street, you're going here, and you're, you're tempted to stop. And people, people thought he was talking about something much worse when he talks about driving up Parade Street and being tempted. <laughs> they didn't know they were talking about donuts. <laughs> um, so, but it's that temptation. It's the smell. It's the taste, and that's alluring. So he uses that. And a lot of years ago, when he would talk about it, we actually took a picture of one of his grandkids eating a donut and put it up behind him. And he's all preaching and being serious, and everybody's dying. He looked up and saw the picture. So it's, we can't get away from it. It's part of who we are. We can find donuts. Next, Community Day. Or one of the only events with a double name, Family Fun Day. Known outside, we call it, but inside, we somehow we named it Community Day, and that's what we refer to it as. But it's an outreach we do every summer to our community. This has become, uh, and hopefully we get to do it this year, we don't, we don't know, but it's become a, a free fair, a carnival. It's like Disneyland for, for some kids. Um, everything in, a, in it, about it is 100% free. We have bounce houses last year. We had a rock climbing wall. We got snow cones, nachos and cheese, hot dogs, Smiths only. That should have made them work. Yeah. That's an honorable mention. <laughs> Nothing served in this place with Smiths. We don't yeah. know. Every once in a while, we try to slip in a little food bank thing, and that green, shrinking hot dog. Get it out of here. All right, so that's an honorable mention. Maybe we'll start it. Anyways, um, community day. Well, we've done free haircuts. We do back bags, backpack backpacks filled with school supplies. Uh, it's just a wonderful thing. And then we, when we first started, we, our heart and desire was just to give away, like, bikes and things like that. So we do an auction type thing where you just put in tickets. Everybody gets so many, and at the end, we... We announced we give, and now we're given, we've been given the last few years, three different sized boy bikes, three different sized girl bikes, and they're nice bikes, and kids are so happy and blessed, and it's just been an amazing outreach we do, community day. Next, the family room. Even though it's a, a new room, a new name to that part of the building, it's been with us all the time. We used to call it the fellowship hall. Family room is just way cooler. So, I'm sorry if you're attached to the fellowship hall name, but family room is what we're calling it now, and 
We made it official, made a sign, it's up there as you can see it lit up. But it's, it's held harvest parties for years. It's held uh, wedding dinners and receptions and funeral dinners and uh, banquets and baby showers. And it's a place of fellowship. It's a place of encouragement. It's a place to gather and grow in the family room. When, it, when all this stuff's over, we can fellowship like we want to, service end about, you know, whenever service ends. And we want to not just end the service, but kind of dismiss to hang out and talk and get to know one another and have coffee and have a snack and just fellowship, man. Just get to know each other. Next, you are now entering the mission field. You can't see it in the back. We're getting down to the bottom here. You are now entering the mission field. It was a saying at the Bible colleges, our pastor's church that are over us in Rocky Mount, Virginia. They have it along the, over the back door of the church. So every time you see it, every time you, you walk out of the church, it says, you are now entering the mission field. I've always loved that. So we, we, we talked about doing that, but it's up here. So we always see it. Every time you walk out of the doors of this building, you are in the mission field. Mission Field is not just some place in Uganda or South America or wherever. That, that is the Mission Field, and I thank God for it. We send people there, and we support people in those places. But you are a missionary. Every one of us is called to do the work of the evangelist. Your life is a mission. You need to accept it. Your work is a ministry. Whether you're up here behind a microphone or not, you are preaching a sermon every day of your life. We're going to live with intention. You are in the mission field. We want to remind you of it. Established in 1985. We need to remember when God gave his word and prophesied and spoke and had my parents step out. Established in 1985. That's the year when this ministry began with our founding pastors falling in. They stepped out in faith and obedience. Amen. They started this work. The Fairview Plaza. Right here. Right here. You guys are getting dizzy looking at everything. Fairview Plaza. That's what this building was called. Yep. This was the plaza. This was Fairview Mall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't remember anything. <laughs> but um, we have, we're trying to find some old pictures. We've got one picture that we kind of have of the older building. But this middle building was a drugstore, like a Rite Aid, far more. The building next door here, uh, they weren't used to not be interconnected. We, we knocked the holes in the wall and connected them. But that was the liquor store. The building next door was a water treatment uh, company. And uh, so we first saw it came, we were renting under Dr. Andrick's office over here in Fairview. And we came and, and uh, moved in here, was renting, and the whole place ended up going for sale. And it was a, some miraculous big price, over 300000 And we offered 130 I think it was. And they laughed at us and said, we owe more than that. We're not going to sell it to you less than we owe. Who would do that? Huh. You're going to do that in just a couple months. <laughs> and uh, we made that offer. And uh, they laughed us out of the room, but lo and behold, God had a plan. Oh, God would make a way where the seeds would be no way and called us up. And they had to get a loan to pay off the loan to sell it to us for less than they owed. But that's the kind of stuff God does. It's favor of God, amen? Yeah. These are what these songs mean. It's not just words, but it's the favor of God moving and working on our behalf. And if he did it for my parents, he'll do it for me. If he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. What's on your band? What's your band say? What do these songs mean? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, second of our core scriptures here, New Beginning Church, says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Hallelujah. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new. Amen. Come on. God's given that to my, my dad from the beginning. God wants you to have a new beginning today. Yeah. No matter what has, has happened in the past or what is happening this morning as you drove here. A new beginning. Every day. And that's why you need it. New beginnings. Because it's plural. Thank God we get more than one restart. Yeah. More than one reading, yeah. more than one refresh. And also just to throw that in there, I thank God that we don't have to go back to where we started every time. But it comes yeah. alongside us to pick up right where you're at. Yeah. And let's get going. Let's yeah. keep going. New beginnings. Shake hands and be friendly. You're not going to hear it as often. Every once in a while I might throw it out there, but especially during COVID season, we ain't saying that. 
Shake hands and be friendly. Just be friendly. Wave and be friendly. But this is how my dad ended every sermon for 35 years. With that saying, shake hands and be friendly. So we will forever see that in this place. Be with us. All things new. That is our vision. That he makes all things new. That no one is too far, been too bad, done too much wrong, that God can't work in their life. No situation, no relationship, no circumstance is beyond the reach of our God. Amen. He makes all our all things new. new. The next one, baptism at Avonia Beach. Most churches have their own baptistry. We had a little a one for a while. It was right there below the cross. It was actually a, a hole we cut in the ground and sunk a big tank in with, with no drain and no supply. And then run a hose and fill it up and then they have to heat it and empty it. And uh, for years we've gone to many other churches and used our baptistry. But really our go-to has always been Lake here. It's always been that lake down at Avonia Beach, Raccoon Park. And they tell the story of having a church baptism there. And the next day, on Monday morning, there was on the headlines, Raccoon Park closed. Pollution. <laughs> Pollution. <laughs> and it was all in sins to wash away the whole Raccoon Park. Okay. Amen. But about the beach, I even hear the stories of someone breaking ice to get baptized. Holy uh -huh. oh, yeah, over here. Broke ice. You know you're serious when you're going to break ice. Serious or crazy. Uh, yeah. But she's still here, so it works. Yeah. Amen. The ice baptism challenge. Ice bucket challenge. And we started that. Um, we are family. Where are we at? Well, we are family. We want you to know you are part of a family. <laughs> you know orphans in this place. You're adopted by the, the Heavenly Father, and you've got a new family. Wow. Brothers and sisters. People to look up to. People to listen to. People to glean from. Older men and women, younger ones to encourage along the way. You are part of a family. We are stronger together. Amen? Amen. We don't want to be church members. We want to do life together. And that's part of the goal of the family. We're encouraged doing life together. Eventually get back into small groups and start to up. Lake Erie, our region. This is how people know where we're at. Whenever we're uh, out and about around the country doing work or pastors overseas and and they ask, where's Erie? And they're like, you know what? Those five great lakes, the one called Erie, we're right there. <laughs> named after it. And then everybody else calls us the church from Erie, even though we're in Fairview. But who knows? No one's ever heard of Fairview. So maybe we'll put Fairview on the map. Amen? But uh, Lake Erie, this is our region. Uh, we sent out a group from this church with my brother James, and they started the Rock Fellowship Church. Isn't that what they're calling it? This Rock Fellowship. The Rock Fellowship. So they're there in Kanya. If you're ever out that way, you want to visit the church? Awesome church. God is doing a mighty thing. We're so excited to be part of what they're doing and what God is doing in Kanya. So it's what it's funny, it's right by the lake. So it just keeps us close. We've got friends and uh, people that look up to pastor and call pastors that call him pastor all over. But we've got friends on the other side of the lake. And uh, up in Canada, if you're listening, hey guys, we love you. And uh, so just on the other side of that lake, uh, that Lake Erie, we've got friends on that side. And uh, just, just something we are part of. New James Full Gospel Church. That's our official full name. Yeah, NB Church is kind of what we're going by. It's a lot easier to write on a check, a lot easier to say, a lot easier to text, a lot easier to spell. You'd be surprised how many people can't spell beginnings. But NB Church, but New Beginnings Full Gospel Church is our official name. The word that was given my Uncle Jim, my Aunt Sarah's not here today, but her husband, that he eventually gave to my father. And uh, after God told him it was for you to do, Jim, it was for Paul to do. That God wants a full gospel work in Fairview, Pennsylvania. And lastly, we're wrapping it up here at the end. It's funny how we didn't plan all this stuff. The last thing we want you to know. last thing we want you to remember is you belong here. There is a place for you at the table. You belong here. That after reading all these things, we want you to know that you belong here. And all these things and more, there is a place for you. You are welcome here. This is your home. You are loved. Whether you're just visiting for one service, coming for a while, or have made this place your home for years, you are welcome. And that's what we need to make sure. We need to make sure everybody feels that. Amen? Amen. Amen. That it be a place of healing, 
peace and restoration. We've had that word given to us as, as a place where doors swing in, doors swing out. People come for a season, get restored, find the peace of God, and go on out. And we're not sitting here and be bitter. Why didn't they stay? So many people have come and, and uh, come into marriage and in, uh, in a wreck, and, and God uses the, the leadership here and ministry here and touches them. Ends up bringing them back together, and then they go back to the other church that they came from. It's like, what? Come on, man. God raised you up here. But no, that's how God called us to be. That God calls us to be a hospital. There's a spiritual place to, to minister His love and then send back out. Amen? It's about ministering Amen. people, touching people. Some come for a little, some for a long, some just to help us get through the next phase. And that's what we're believing as we go into this next phase of, of transition and building a gym. Amen? Building a gym. And God wants us to do it. God's going to bring key people in place and make that happen. Amen. I've been told my whole life that we're going to have a, a youth center, a life center, a gymnasium that will just work. And God's had me coaching and making connections with people in sports and for a reason that we would host clinics, whether it be wrestling, yeah. and football, and basketball, and different things that we would minister to the community, teach. Yes, the sport, but also teach the spiritual part of it. And be on our property, we can say and do what we want to do. Amen. And, uh, but be a place to, to gather and hold just large gatherings. I believe God can do it here in Fairview. Amen? Amen. 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 And be church, this is your man. This is your man. When your children ask, hey, what's that mean? You tell them. You tell them what God, the Lord, your God, did in our lives, in our past. And he'll do in the future. This is where we've been, and God will take us to where we're going. And we're wrapping it up. God was with us then, He's with us now, and He'll be with us in the future. All that I've seen teaches me to trust God in all that I haven't seen. All that I've seen teaches me to trust God in all that I haven't seen. One more thing to leave you with when heaven, what heaven starts, hell can't stop. Amen. 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 something in your life, no matter what hell comes your way, you can stop. Come on. Come on. God started a work in you, and the Bible says He will be faithful to complete it. Amen. Amen. Don't get distracted by the things going on around you. Come on, let what's inside of you affect your surroundings. Greater is He that's within you than He that's in the world. One more thing: we are not doing this for God; we are doing this with God for this city. The last 35 years has been a great start. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I want to encourage you, church. Let's keep going. Amen? Amen. 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 Let me just bow. Bow with me in prayer. Lord God, I thank you for this church. God, I thank you for this work. God, I thank you for every believer in this room, Lord. Lord, the work that you're doing in it for every person, God. Lord, I ask for your hand to be upon them, God. Lord, I pray you bring peace, God, in every situation and circumstance. Lord, I thank you for this banner up here, God. I thank you for the banner that you place over every life individually, God. Lord, as we opened up your text this morning and read, your banner over us is love. That no matter what the world is trying to put on any person in this place, your banner is love, God. I thank you that you wash our past clean away. God, that when we look, God, all we see is your blood, your love, your sacrifice. Lord, I thank you, God, for your strength to go on, Lord, and do much greater things in the future. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Let's go. Let's do the church. We love you guys.